Hello, this is Mark Hamilton for The Right Report, and I'd like to talk a little bit about the subprime mortgage crisis. I was watching TV today and I heard the term reverse redlining, and it was used with respect to how we got into the subprime mortgage crisis. So I'd like to comment a little bit on, on that, that, that term and what the mortgage crisis means to me and how I think we got in, into that crisis. Back in the late 70s and early 80s, the term redlining became very popular. And what that term meant was that standards applied by mortgage companies to the ability of people to repay loans and the probability that in certain locations default rates were high resulted in a lack of loans to those groups and in those zip codes. So essentially, redlining meant there was some sort of bias or irrational discrimination in terms of lending to either certain groups of people or to lend in certain areas. And this caused a lack of opportunity and lack of home ownership. And basically, the left wing and the liberals in this country and the various rights activists clamored and clamored and clamored that there be mortgage equity and that redlining be stopped that there be investment in our communities and in our people and that the American dream be made available to all. But in reality, what was going on is that the mortgage companies basically had loan standards. If you didn't have a stable job and you had an inadequate income and you had an inadequate or no down payment, or you were buying a home in an area that statistically had a tremendous default rate where the mortgage holder wouldn't be able to resell the house, then they weren't making loans. Essentially, mortgage lenders were applying standards to the location of the house, the probability of default, and also to the ability of the borrower to pay. And as a result, you did have groups of people and locations where loans weren't being made. Well, in order to fix the problem, um, liberals, essentially I'll use that term, in our country came up with a concept of housing equity, mortgage equity, community reinvestment. A number of laws were passed and a number of regulations were put in place and other regulations were relaxed in the mortgage lending area. This basically allowed and encouraged mortgage lenders to make loans to someone with no job, no income, and no down payment, and to encourage loans to be made in neighborhoods where default rates were historically high and where crime, drugs, and other social ills made the recouping of the money by going into foreclosure almost impossible. And what did we get? Well, we did get the housing boom, basically, of the early 2000s with a lot of this money going into subprime loans. Essentially, the greedy mortgage companies who wouldn't make loans to a certain group of people or in certain neighborhoods now were actually out doing it and enabling folks to have the dream of home ownership. Well, basically, the laws of finance held. And the people who were denied loans by the greedy mortgage companies back in the 70s and 80s now got those loans and couldn't pay the loans back and their homes went into foreclosure. And now whose fault is it? It's the fault of the same greedy mortgage companies for engaging in predatory lending and enticing someone to buy a house they really couldn't afford. Not being the nanny mortgage company, but letting adults make their decisions. So basically, folks, my, my view is, yes, if redlining kept loans away from certain folks and away from certain areas, then I guess the term reverse redlining makes sense in terms of pumping the money out at breakneck speed to those same groups that were determined unable to pay back in the 70s and 80s. And I'm not talking about 
specific people. I'm talking about different people with the same attributes. Ergo, this is how we got really to a lot of the subprime mortgage crisis and the foreclosure problem. And it's big trouble, but it just goes to show that you cannot take someone who can't afford a house and turn them into a homeowner. And when politicians buck around in the area of finance and try to redistribute benefits, it always fails. And this is Mark Hamilton signing off for The Right Report.